the Johnson's Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's new water repellent glow coat present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Cliff Arquette, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. Again tonight, I'm bringing you the great news about Johnson's new glow coat. It is now positively water repellent. Yes, at last, there's a self-polishing floor wax that does not show ugly spots when you wipe up spill things. Muddy footprints tracked in snow just whisk right off its hard, shining surface. Glow coat stays on, stays bright, even after repeated damp moppings. In fact, Johnson's glow coat now lasts up to four times longer. Guaranteed the most economical self-polishing floor wax you can buy. Glow coat is as easy to use as ever. You get the same lustrous shine without polishing. Protects your floors, as always, with a tough, lustrous shield that reduces wear, makes cleaning far easier. And now, Johnson's new glow coat is positively water repellent. Saves work, saves floors, saves money. Lasts up to four times longer. So tomorrow, get Johnson's new glow coat in the regular glow coat package. No change at all in the container. Ah, but what a wonderful difference inside. it looks like the gentle hand of fame has finally slapped the ears off Mr. McGee of Wistful Vista. With him right now is the president of the so-called Man of the Year book publishing company. And what he has just nominated Mr. McGee for, you won't believe. Mrs. McGee is skeptical about it, too. But listen to the conversation between J. Worthington Grift and Fibber McGee and Molly. that, Molly? Did you hear what the man said? Me. Me, the man of the year. Yes, I heard it. What year is that? <laughs> the year of the big crash? <laughs> oh, no, 1949. Naturally, madam. Naturally, madam. Wow. The man of the year. Now, look, let's face it, McGee, you're not the type As I of say, the time is short. Our man of the year book is about to go to press, and our board of trustees has chosen Mr. McGee from among thousands of men as man of the year from this state. The whole state, Molly. Ah, fame at last. Oh, dear. Tell me more, bud. Tell me more. Go on, elaborate. Well, we'd like to run your picture in the book, of course. You have my permission, bud. Fibber McGee, man of the year. <laughs> You'll be in with famous men from other states. Only one from each state, of course. Oh. Men like Jimmy Roosevelt, Jeez. Vice President Barkley, Grace of Bethlehem Steel. Oh, women too, eh? <laughs> no, dearie, Grace of Bethlehem Steel is a man. She is? Yes. <laughs> Look, I have just one question, Mr. Graff. A uh, grift, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> J. Worthington Grift. One question. How much does it cost? Cost? Oh, now, please, Mrs. McGee, let's not talk about money. No. My gosh, not that. <laughs> the Man of the Year book, Mrs. McGee, is a non-profit deal. Well, most of my deals are non-profit, bud. <laughs> if I can just break even once in a while, I'm happy. All we ask our Men of the Year to do is to help defray the cost of publishing this great book. The book which will spread their fame throughout the nation. Ah, Fibber McGee, man of the year, throughout the nation. <laughs> oh, wait till you see this beautiful volume, Mr. McGee. Huh? Handsomely engraved on genuine simulated parchment-type newspaper stock. <laughs> and bound in Morocco. Morocco, eh? Morocco, Indiana. <laughs> Now, this handsome book that I How have, much? $25 for developing and processing his photograph and um, $10.50 a copy for the book. That's all. 
<laughs> Thank you, Mr. Griff, but we're not interested. Now, if you'll excuse us... Oh, not interested. No, no, no. Tut, tut. Tut. <laughs> You're just excited, my dear. After all, when one's husband has just been selected man of the year, one should not think of money. Leave us not be sorted. But, McGee, now and you... And speaking ca- of sorted, have you sorted the laundry today, Molly? <laughs> If you want to go sort the laundry now while I and Griffin talk about this... Oh, I give up. I quit. I'll keep quiet. You go right ahead. Good. Now, if you'll just sign this contract, Mr. McGee... Give me the pen. Fibber McGee, man of the year. There you are, bud. Now, the check... I've reserved five copies of the book for you, so just sign this check for seventy-seven fifty, and I'll be on my way. Oh, okay, dear. seventy-seven fifty, eh? There you are, bud. Mm-hmm. And the right change too. <laughs> now, how about the picture? Will you send a photographer? Uh, no, I'll just take this picture off the piano here. This'll do all right. That's Uncle Dennis. <laughs> we'll retouch it, madam. Congratulations, Mister McGee, and goodbye. Oh, my gosh. Them high-class book publishers are terrific, Molly. Imagine taking a picture of Uncle Dennis and making it look like me when all the time... Seventy-seven dollars and all come in. Well, don't get sore about it. Did I ring too loud or something? No, I'm sorry, Dr. Gamble. I'm not mad at you. Oh, good. Say, who was the seedy-looking character in the pinstripe spats who nearly ran over me on the porch? Friend of yours, duck face? <laughs> That doctor was J. Worthington Griff, the noted publisher. He just dropped in to bring me the good news. Good news? For $77 and a half, doctor, himself here has just been made 1949's Pigeon of the Year. (laughs) It's Man of the Year, Molly. Oh, no. Yep. The Board of Trustees has just chose me Man of the Year for this whole state, that's all. Going to have my name in the official book and a picture, too. Of Uncle Dennis. No, that, that, that picture will be okay, Molly. You heard him say they'd retouch it. They're experts. Oh, I love that picture of Uncle Dennis, Molly. Yeah. The first thing the retoucher will have to do is paint out that extra pair of eyes on his forehead. Well, Uncle Dennis always claimed the camera wobbled when they took it, Doctor. But that guy, kiddo, everything wobbled. <laughs> when the photographer told him to look at the birdie, he held out for old crow. <laughs> Give me the details on this 7750 story, Molly. Did little Swindler's pet here actually bite on the old book racket? That's the corniest swindle since... What do you mean, swindle? I told you I was chose man of the year. Legitimate. Hmm. You wouldn't happen to be so jealous you can't see straight, would you, gas pain? (laughs) Now, McGee, don't... Oh, well, my gosh, just because the only picture he ever had printed was an x-ray of his kidneys in the medical journal that looked like two lima beans in a tub of lard. <laughs> oh, on account of that, he's now, got a... Now, now, McGee, stop it, stop oh, uh, it. Look, look, dream boy. With your genius for involving yourself in messes, you remind me of my brother. Oh, yeah? He was a bomber pilot, and any time his plane got in a jam, he'd drop a magnesium flare so he could see to land. Oh, I remind you of him, huh? Yes, you too have a flair for getting into trouble. So long, Molly. Uh... Billy Mills in the orchestra and the Johnson Rag.
McGee, 1949's Man of the Year. <laughs> ah, boy, this sure upsets all the predictions, don't it? If you mean the one in the Peoria High School Annual that voted you the man most likely to be forgotten before the ink dries in the high school annual, yes. <laughs> you betcha. And can you imagine Aunt Sarah's face when she gets the news? She always says I'd never amount to anything, too, either. Oh, she didn't say that, dearie. Sure she did. Oh, no, no. Uh, she merely said that if you ever really made up your mind to be somebody, that with your brains and persistence, uh, and given a little luck, no matter who tried to stop you or what obstacles were placed in your path, nothing would happen. <laughs> My gosh, did she really say that? I guess I must have misunderstood her. She's a pretty shrewd judge of character, Aunt Sarah is. Well, as the lady remarked when she stood on her head to watch television, that's one way to look at it. <laughs> Darn right. Now, let me see. I wonder if I better have Look Magazine send a cameraman out here. Make a great cover picture. I could be sitting in front of the fire with my great Dane. Hello, Molly. Hi, pal. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Good day, my boy. I suppose you dropped in to inquire as to what I attribute my success to what? What success, pal? They just made me man of the year for 1949, Junior. Who did? A slick stranger with a fast fountain pen. <laughs> <laughs> Molly seems to think the guy was a gyp artist, Junior, but wait till some big corporation makes me chairman of the board at 200000 a year. It's awful hard for a woman to shrug her shoulders in a mink coat. <laughs> Tell me more about this, pal. On what basis was the selection made? Looks, wealth, social position, achievements? Um, well... I guess that answers that question. <laughs> you mean that you were not approached in this matter, Mr. Wilcox, or aren't you on the sucker list? <laughs> no, I guess they got me tagged as just an ordinary guy. But say, if there was an award for the product of the year, I'll bet I know what it would be. Oh, but I do, too. <laughs> but if I mentioned it, everybody would think I just wanted one for nothing. So no, 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 no. I, I, I mean, Johnson's new water repellent glow coat. Yeah. Well, heavenly days, how did you ever happen to think Because of the all? new water repellent glow coat is the greatest, most sensational development in floor protection in many years. To think that now, now a housewife can wipe up spilled things with a mop or a damp cloth without leaving drab smears and dull spots. Hmm. We better get some of that for our own use, kiddo. I've heard it said that our dull spots are beginning to show. I <laughs> Go on, let Mr. Wilcox make a living. Thank you, Molly. But as a housewife yourself, I don't have to tell you how much the new self-polishing water repellent glow coat means in saving time and work. Indeed you don't, Mr. Wilcox. And why does he every Tuesday night for the past 15 because, years? Because when, 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 you, when you apply the new water repellent glow coat, it stays on and it stays bright. Right. You don't wipe up the wax when you wipe up the floor. Oh, hey, and look, pal. Huh? Don't let a little success like this go to your head. What do you mean? Remember, it isn't how you see yourself that counts. It's how others will be seeing you. Be what, Mr. Wilcox? Be seeing you. So long. Oh. <laughs> Notice his face when I told him I'd just been picked for the man of the year, kiddo? Pure jealousy. I thought it was pure apathy myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, jealousy. I can read that fellow like a book. Maybe because he's Johnson's bestseller, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine being envious simply because a friend of yours gets to be choice for an honor like man of the year. <laughs> Why, my gosh, if a pal of mine was that successful, I'd be the first to congrat... What's the matter? You know something? I ain't been congratulated by anybody. Not even you. Well, McGee, I think you've been the victim of a gold brick peddler. Oh, well, my gosh. Now, look, why don't we ride downtown and check this thing with the police, dearie? It can't do any harm, and maybe... Oh, it well, if it'll make you any happier, Molly, okay. In fact, I'll be glad to prove to you that this is a legitimate deal. Get your hat and we'll grab a streetcar and we'll be down. Come in. Well, for goodness sakes, make room for another fairly prominent citizen, McGee. It's the mayor. Come on in, Your Honor. Oh, thank you. Good day, McGee. Hi, Latrev. Heard about me? Yes. Yes. But I didn't believe it. <laughs> you didn't? No. No, when they told me, I said it was impossible. <laughs> No one could rip the cover on the Elks pool table every week for seven straight weeks. Now, that ain't to what I was referring to, Latrib. 
No. No, No, he was referring in his shy, bashful way to the fact that for only $77.50 and the swift sales talk, he was selected as the man of the year for this community for 1949. It's a tremendous honor, Latriv. I get my name and my picture in a book, too, you see. The man of the year, 1949 book. For a guy that's never had his name in anything but the telephone directory, that's a pretty big step forward. Yes, yes it is. As I always say, it's better to be a big toad and a little puddle. Who's a big a... toad? I beg your pardon? I didn't say anyone was Personally, a big toad. Personally, I don't think calling a man a toad is particularly flattering, Mr. Mayor, of all the repulsive uh, Please, to... please. I, I was not calling your husband a toad. Uh-huh. I just remarked that it was better to be a big toad and a little puddle. Now, just a, a minute there, minute. son. <laughs> When you refer to the very city of which you happen to be the mayor of it as a little puddle, by George, I think it's but time that... That was just part of the expression. If I were you, Mr. Mayor, and I'm glad I'm not because I look very silly in a high sale cap, I'd forget my being overlooked in the selections and not refer to the winner as a dirty little reptile in a mud hole. <laughs> Because a toad could hardly be confused. I wasn't remudding anybody as a dirty mother in a dirt toad. A love toad. Look! Huh? When I said it's better to be a big poodle in a little total. You said a little paddle in a puddle. A big muddle in a little, 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 little puddle. You were the one who told I said. You said. It was. You were. Morgan. I was tracked. I was tracked. Yes, boy? When I was just a little toddler, there was a nasty little boy who lived next door. I detested him. In order to ignore him successfully, I would start playing furiously with my toys. But what's that got to do with... One of my toys was a little musical top which I could spin by use of the bellows from the fireplace. Yeah, but what that got to do with the... I think that's why, even now, when I meet someone who's being particularly objectionable, I am inclined to revert to my childhood and blow my top. Good day! The King's Man and the Old Master Painter... That old master painter from the faraway hills Painted the violets and the daffodils He put the purple in the twilight haze Then made a rainbow for the rainy day Dreamed up the murals on the blue summer skies Painted the devil in my darling's eyes Captured the dreamer with a thousand thrills the old master painter from the faraway hills. Then came his masterpiece, and when he was through, he smiled down from heaven and he gave me you. What a beautiful job on a wonderful day. The old master painter from the hills. Far away. Far away. Far away. Riding on a streetcar. 
<laughs> it's a hoi poli. I'm riding all the way down to the police station just so he can prove to his own wife that I'm famous. My gosh, on the street car. Well, I'm sorry, dearie, but I still think you've been swindled. Ah. Uh... Let's ask the chief of police about it and find out. All right. I'll... I'm leaving Smith. I'm leaving phone ring. Wrong transfer. <laughs> I don't think you quite grasp what a terrific honor this thing is, Molly. I wish I'd have grasped that 7750 before that grafter grip grabbed it. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong, sweetheart, but to me, this whole deal looks as shady as the north side of a haystack. Well, you'll see, kiddo, you'll see. I only wish I'd brought along an apple for you. Why an apple? So the trip wouldn't be entirely fruitless. <laughs> Oh, my gosh, don't you get it, Molly? You says, why an apple? And I says... Next stop, go for Lazenberg. Go for Lazenberg next. Change for nerve. Start stop, McGee. 14th Street. Yeah, well, come on. Boy, when that chief of police finds out he's talking to the man of the year, he'll probably be so impressed he'll want to give me a free book of traffic tickets. You wait and see. Go for Lazenberg. All out for go for Lazenberg. Nerf car. Let him out, please. Coming out, please. Thank you. Now watch your step, Molly. That's it. Between high steps and tight skirts, I have to Take it over, Smith. Take it over. <laughs> this way, kiddo. As soon as I get you straightened out on this thing, I'll call the papers and endorse a few products and look who's coming, the old timer. Oh, yes, and his girlfriend. Yes. Hello, you two. Hello there, daughter. Hi, Johnny. Hi, old timer. You kids know Bessie, don't you? Say hello to the folks, Bessie. Hello, you all. <laughs> Me and O.T. was just down That's there. enough, Bessie. <laughs> we, we, we. He, just hold. That's enough. <laughs> What you doing down here, kid? Well, we're down here on business, old-timer. Matter of fact, I've just been conferred on with a great honor on. <laughs> You're looking at the new man of the year. Oh, I'm so happy for you, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> I've been going around with the old man of the year myself. <laughs> Now, don't go getting personal, Bessie. I know who you mean. <laughs> oh, I'm just teasing you, O.T. I'm pretty independent, you know, since I had that offer to work in the movies. No kidding, Bessie. Really? You in the movies? What'd they offer you? Three cents a bag for all the popcorn I can sell. <laughs> Bessie knows popcorn, kids, from top to bottom. Well, that's the best way to eat it. <laughs> yep, her brother was in the business. Oh. Built himself a process for refining crankcase drainings and using them to butter popcorn with. <laughs> My gosh, I wish I'd have thought of that one. Did he get rich? No, he had bad luck, Mr. McGee. Oh. Somebody told him popcorn would cure the he cups, so he ate a bag. <laughs> well, uh, did it work? Well, he cured his he cups, but he developed a bad piston knock. <laughs> He uh, started making a full stop at railroad crossing. <laughs> and the winter, Mama caught him drinking antifreeze. We sold him to the used car dealer, and that is... Oh, hold it, Bessie, hold it. <laughs> Take it easy, baby. Don't hog the conversation. <laughs> I'll tell the folks what happened to your brother. And well, some other time, old timer, some other time. <laughs> As the man of the year, I can't stand here gabbing. I got things to do. Yes, first of all, we're going in the city hall here to see the chief of police. Yeah, Molly's got some strange idea that I don't deserve this honor, old timer. She thinks it's a swindle. Swindle, eh? Yeah. Is this a deal where a fellow comes to the house, tells you you're elected Mr. America, and sells you a bunch of books with your picture in it for five bucks a copy? Papa worked that through the south oh, and made no, a lot of them. No. <laughs> No, no, this is entirely different. Oh, yes, indeed. This book sells for ten fifty a copy. Sure, and besides, I'm not Mr. America. I'm the man of the year. Oh, oh, that's different. Yeah, yeah that's different, Johnny. Sounds like you got a fine deal. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. But, daughter, don't ever let the boy go for that $5 deal. It's crooked. <laughs> well, so long, kids. 
How tall are you, old man of the year? Goodbye, man. <laughs> McGee, let's find out about this thing right now. Okay. Good. I want to get started endorsing stuff right away, Molly. Every minute I lose is, hey, bud, is the chief in because, oh, are you the chief police? That's right, mister. What's your problem? No problem, bud. You probably don't know who you're talking to, so I'll introduce us. I'm Fibber McGee, man of the year. And this is my wife, Mrs. Man of the Year. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Fibber McGee. How do you do, I'm sure, chief. Glad to know you, madam. Now, if you'll... Who did you say you are? Oh, you'll read about it in the papers. I've just been chosen man of the year from this section by the board of trustees of the... Man of the year? You see, Chief, this man came to the house. Yeah. This Mr. Grift. And he told my husband they'd picked him man of the year, and he collected $77.50 and left. And my wife thinks there may be something wrong, although personally, I've been expecting this recognition. Something now. wrong? Why, that crook, that's what? the rottenest swindle I ever heard of, what? the dirty dog. Mm-hmm. Clancy Walker, Stanislaus, comb the town, throw up roadblocks, drag that crook in here. Hey, now, just a darn minute. You don't even know the guy. What makes you think he's crooked? Think he's crooked? That rat told me I was man of the year. <laughs> he charged me $90, that robber. You hear that, Molly? You hear that? 90 bucks. I say $12 and a half. Say twelve and a half. I bought it for seventy-seven fifty. Okay, I'll go quietly. <laughs> Fibber and Molly return in a moment. Suppose you spill something on a brightly polished floor, or the children track mud or snow all over it. What happens? Is that lustrous shine ruined? Is there a streaky, dull blotch where you wiped up the muss? Not if you protect your floors with self-polishing water-repellent new glow coat. You just whisk spills and tracks away without leaving ugly marks. Even damp mopping doesn't kill that lustrous wax sheen. Johnson's glow coat stays on, stays bright, up to four times longer. Guaranteed the most economical self-polishing floor wax money can buy. Tomorrow, start using Johnson's water-repellent new glow coat. It's at your dealers in the regular glow coat container. Don't take off your hat, McGee. Why not? I can get it off easy now. <laughs> My head to stop swelling. Oh, no, I didn't right. mean that. Oh. But we forgot to stop at Kramer's Drugstore to get some more Christmas seals. Oh, my gosh. So you did. We did. Oh. And we've got to use Christmas seals, you know. Everyone should. Because when you stick a Christmas seal on your cards and packages, you are giving an extra gift. The gift of better health to humanity because you're helping to stamp out tuberculosis. Right. Good night. Good night, Al. <laughs> The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's new water-repellent glow coat, Racine, Wisconsin, and Brantford, Canada, bring you Fiddle McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you? Presents you'll appreciate and treasure for years to come. For it takes all the work out of one of the hardest jobs women do, polishing waxed floors. There's no work to it with the Beautifloor Polisher. The big whirling brush does all the work while you merely walk along and guide. Tomorrow, see the Beautifloor Polisher at any dealer's. The full price is only forty-four fifty. Have one delivered to her Christmas morning. Stay tuned for Big Town coming up next on NBC.